Good morning, Jackson, Mississippi, and all surrounding areas. You've tuned in to the Free Range Human Show of Choice, your daily dose of reality radio, the anti-cancel culture show of choice. Yes. This is the Clay Edwards Show, and back together, and it feels so good. <laughs> looking at looking at me from across the desk, we've got Miss Therese April with Dark Horse Press now in Hi, the studio. Everybody. We want to thank Therese for getting up and coming in this morning to uh, do the first hour with us. Second hour, we've got our testimonial Tuesdays. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this. We've got Kim Harrington coming in. She's going to talk about how prescription drug, uh, a normal uh, prescription drug, led her down to the path of addiction and jail and all kind of stuff, and how she came back and is a perfectly functioning uh, citizen nowadays. So if you know somebody going through that struggle, of prescription drugs, uh, we're going to have somebody on that may be able to to help with that. And I tell you what, well, I wasn't planning on taking calls quite this early, but if you want to call in, I guess we'll take a call real quick on the Dustin Bailey at Southern Magnolia's Realty phone line. Hey, you're on there. Good morning. I'm glad you're there, Therese. <laughs> hey, Miss Sylvia, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? It's so good, good to hear your voice over the radio. Yeah, I'm yeah, glad it's good to be here. back together. I wish you would come back. I really wish you would come back. Look, I as miss- soon as I can hire enough employees because I'm making enough money, then I can be here every day if I need to. <laughs> That'd be great. That was my whole one to say. Good morning, y'all. Bye. Hey, All right. hey, Sylvia, hold on a second. Well, I was going to uh, cue her up on something. Miss Sylvia played a huge role yesterday, I believe, in the topic we're going to discuss today. Oh, really? Yep. She uh, she sent me screenshots of all the emails that she sent Ted Fortenberry. Good. Good. And um, the gloves were off politely, as you know, as as off as Miss Sylvia is going to take them. Sure. You know, letting her know or letting him know she emailed Barbie, all that stuff. So Therese is here today because we feel like we have a mission uh, from God. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And you know this this Barbie Bassett thing blew up yesterday, mm-hmm. and she came out and she was basically forced to apologize. But I know she wanted to apologize. I mean, you could hear you talk yeah, about she, sincere. That was genuine. Yeah. That was as sincere of an apology as I've ever heard. So what we're going to do? Less of me, more of Barbie. Let's just play Barbie's apology real quick in case you missed it, because I want you to hear what sincerity and class sounds like. It would do mm-hmm. some of you some good. We have heard from many of you regarding an exchange in a WLBT newscast last week. In an effort to be transparent, we want you to know we have had meaningful internal conversations and discussions about this situation. Barbie Bassett would like to address those comments. Last Friday on our newscast today at 11, I used a term that was offensive to many in our audience and to my coworkers here at WLBT. And though it was not intentional, I now understand how both my comment was insensitive and hurtful. And I have apologized to Carmen Poe. And now I would like to apologize to you because that is not the heart of who I am. And for that, I humbly ask you for your forgiveness. And I apologize to everyone I have offended. I will learn from this. And I will participate in training so I can better understand our history and our people. I cannot mend the hurt that my comment caused. But I pray that you will forgive me and that you'll extend grace through my awful mistake. All right. Okay, so there's the part I want to I want to get in on. The first off, if that offended you, it, you, you you're living you're living you're living life good if that offends you if you've got any all the things that are going on in the world today if somebody saying grandmammy and talking about chocolate pie offends you your priorities are way out of whack second she has, she spoke about grace and hoping that people would give her grace and some of the nasty comments i've seen and i know this guy's a friend of yours but i'm gonna say it anyway uh i saw what Arthur kane posted last night Absolutely disgusting coming from another member of the media, independent media at that, talking about somebody. I mean, they wanted this woman fired over a a joke. I mean, just being sarcastic, playing around, wanted this woman fired 25 years in that in that newsroom and wanted her gone because she said something that they just found offensive, not even directed at anybody. I guess it was directed at Carmen Poe. Um. If if Carmen Poe has accepted her apology and her co-workers have accepted her apology, 
people who weren't even watching the news that morning that just saw the viral spot getting retro offended over something that they saw later. That's disgusting. You know, calling for people's jobs. Simple apology should be enough. I wouldn't apologize, but that's just me. I don't, I don't have that level of class. I would have just gone down swinging. I think the hard part for me to process here is that I do obviously have <clears throat> friends on both sides of this debate. Um, and, of course, it's like I, I prayed so hard about the, the words to handle this because I think, you know— Last night I was talking to somebody about it, and um, and they told me that my white privilege was showing. Oh God! And I'm not even I'm not even mad about that because I, I I mean it it did it hurt me it kind of, you know it it tweaked me wrong. But um, on the other hand, it's like the problem we have here. It actually doesn't have anything to do with Barbie. Or with what she said, or with the people who are yelling this ugly stuff. It's it's hate and it's ugliness and it's the fact that as Americans today, we do not treat people right and we don't stop to understand each other. Because you know, maybe not. I don't generally use the word "mammy," so that wouldn't have come out of my mouth. But um, on the other hand, there's a lot of things that I have learned even in just a little last year. Words that offend people. And so the first thing I did when everybody was mad was I texted somebody and said, oh, my gosh, um, is is it not okay to call somebody Uh sis? Because to me, it's like I use that all the time. You know, everybody was talking about that part, too. And I was like, wait, are we not supposed to say that? That would be like people getting mad at me saying, what's up, brother? I mean, I call everybody brother. Right, or bro. What if you can say bro? (laughs) Bro, sis. I mean, come on, man. So it's like to me, I think the the heartbreak in this is that I do know Barbie, um, and she is – a beautiful person. And and I did say something in all fairness yesterday. I've never had more than about a 30, 45 minute conversation with her um, at a time. But like that, the only reason I said that, and I just say it because somebody used it against me. But the only reason I say that is because like, we aren't the kind of friends that like, you know, do overnights or go shopping together. But she is somebody that has always been extremely kind to me. And she's always been somebody who went out of her way to do what, helps and what makes people feel better and to lift people up for as long as I've known her um, and as long as I've known of her. And the thing that really just threw me off the cliff yesterday was that somebody was on Facebook and, and they were talking back and forth about it on the WLBT page. And somebody says, well, look, I know she's a good person. And somebody came back and said, it doesn't matter if she's a good person. What she said was offensive and she should be fired. A pound of flesh. Right. And and you know what's wrong with you people? And I'm not just talking about this situation. I'm talking about some of the people that have, I mean, I've been on here outraged about stuff black people did to white people and white people did to black people and people did to people. And I am, yeah, I'll say I'm, I'm outraged. It's righteous anger. There's a difference. Um, I am very angry that you people don't know better than to just spew absolutely vile hate all the time. And this was just another example of how the pack mentality kicks in and you lose your mind and you go looking for brains like the walking dead. Well, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's let, alternate reality here. Mm-hmm. Let's say she got fired yesterday. Who who feels better today? Who woke up and said, oh, everything is right in my world today. Barbie Bassett's fired. Right. I feel so much better today. Everything in my life has been justified and rectified. I got a 700 credit score now that Barbie's gone. Right. I mean, well, who woke up and feels better if she's, if she's gone? Well, and, and the thing is, the truth of it in this situation or any other where you see the, you know, the feeding frenzy like this on anybody when it's done and something happens to that person who made a mistake. Um, then you have the people that do the, like the, I don't know, the victory dance. Mm-hmm. They celebrate in the end zone. Like they've never scored a touchdown. And that, that's just, that's a <clears throat> comment on their character. All right. On the guns and gear text line, somebody texted in and I want to clear this up real quick. And this is just my opinion. I'm not speaking uh, from factual information here. Somebody said, where the heck is Carmen Poe from? She doesn't understand Southern culture. I don't, this outrage didn't come from Carmen Yeah, Poe. Carmen didn't do this. Car, yeah, this. This has nothing to do. Carmen's just who was being talked to on the other end of the line. This came from people recording the screen with their phone because I guess somebody was recording it because they thought it was cool to see Jackson State game day mm-hmm. on WLBT. So they're recording it for that, for that live drop and they caught this. 
And that's where the outrage came from. I don't believe it came from Carmen. I think no. if Carmen said she was woefully offended, they probably would have fired Therese. If she said, I don't, I don't feel safe, I can't work around her, mm-hmm. some nonsense like that. But that's not how it went. Uh, i tell you what, let's take a call real quick. Okay. And then I want to say, I, I got something I want to say on a personal level, but I think I'll save it for the other side of the break. We got a sure. caller on hold here. Hey, caller, you're on there. Hi, how are we all doing? We're doing good. How are you? I am well. What I find completely perplexing is most of this are fueled by angry little white girls. Oh, really? I just, if you read the comments, I'm not saying that there aren't black people commenting. Sure. But it's these little white girls who feel like, because I date a black man, I have mixed children. Oh, they virtue signaling. They're feeling. Yeah, and I think we see that it, sometimes with people who want to be on the woke side, you know? And everything I can ever think of is, like, we don't need another little white girl burning down the Wendy's in Georgia <laughs> just to feel hate. Right. Yeah, to, sh- to show everybody that she stands for Black, for yeah, black Lives Matter. And it, yeah, and healed and fed and encouraged, and it just blows my mind. Well, and I think, too, it's another comment also on how women treat each other. You know, like, we'll sit here and say, girl power, let's take care of each other. But then we turn around, and the minute somebody's bleeding, we're right on top of them, you know? Absolutely. Well, look, and, and like I said, it's just a twisted culture, a twisted time at now. Yeah. Because, like, like I, I tell my kids, even right now, women's rights are no longer women's rights. Somehow the alphabet mafia got involved, and it's men's rights. We're fighting for a man to be a woman, <laughs> and women's rights have been left completely behind. Hey, to sure. quote to quote the great Stone Cold Steve Austin, DTA: Don't trust anybody. <laughs> don't give any. Don't let your girls uh, tell tell secrets to nobody except their mama. And uh, like I said, because everybody's looking for something to hold over somebody. Yeah, and, and uh, that's is, probably a little rich and too far for your your show. But I'm sorry, some no. things just need to be said. No, 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 no you're absolutely. Right. Great call. And, Go ahead. And then I know as a talk show personality, it's hard for you to respond. Yeah. So yeah. It, it can Thank be you. left open-ended, and I can be the bad person. You're not the bad person. <laughs> no, you're bringing that truth this morning. We yeah. appreciate it. Thank you for listening and calling in this morning. All right. Thank you so much. Uh-huh. All right, this is the Clay Edwards Show. We're broadcasting live in the Mac Hike of Flowood Studio, and we've got Miss Therese Apel with DarkHorsePressNow.com in the studio with us this morning. We're talking about the Barbie Bassett incident and the apology. We'll be right back on 103.9 WYAB. Breaking rules when necessary. Welcome back into the Clay Edwards Show. We're live in the Mac Hike of Flowood Studio. We've got a new sponsor we're going to tell you all about here after the next break, we'd like to welcome The Gathering out right. there at Livingston to the show. Uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about them here shortly. But this segment is going to be brought to you by Ellis Autoplex, ranking County's hometown dealership. Owned and operated by Casey and Rachel Ellis. And your boy Clay Edwards works there, by the way. If you want to buy a car from Clay, come say hey. <laughs> did I say a rhyme? Yes, sort you of. did say a rhyme. Incidentally. <laughs> accidentally. Uh, Ellis Autoplex, located on Highway 471 in Brandon, right down there next to Booze Smokehouse Barbecue. If you're looking for a quality truck, we really specialize, I say more so in Ford trucks than anything, uh, but we got SUVs, cars, the whole nine yards. Check out our check out our inventory online, ellisautoplex.com, or just swing by. We buy cars, too. We pay fair market value. We have bought a couple of vehicles from you guys right off the road. Uh Instead of you having to deal with the Craigslist crazies or the marketplace maniacs message you, <laughs> messaging you at 2 a.m., is this available, and never replying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then nitpicking your car apart. Right. Just bring it by, let us check it out, and uh, earn your business. That is Ellis Autoplex, located at 2195 Highway 471 in Brandon, ellisautoplex.com. All right, I'm joined in the Mack Hike of Flowwood studio by Miss Therese April with darkhorsepressnow.com. we got Hello, calls listeners. on hold. we got text to read. But I want to speak on something personal real quick. Yeah. I want to say thank you to, it's going to sound corny, but I don't have a better name. This is a working title. To the Clay Edwards Show Army. Um, kind of like the Kiss Army. The Clay Edwards mm-hmm. Show Army out there. Because you guys listened to the show over the last couple, well, yesterday you saw my TikToks and Instagrams and Facebook posts and all that talking about this Barbie Bassett stuff. And I know for a fact a ton of y'all reached out to Ted Fortenberry and to WLBT, right. and to Bobby Bassett, 
and I, I don't I don't want to say we saved her job. I, I I can't I can't say that, but I know that after speaking with Miss Barbie yesterday, I'm just going to leave it at that. She did reach out and thanked us. That it it meant something. That yeah. kind words went a long way. Right. You know, and and that was before she she knew if she was even going to have a job or not. She reached out and said, thank you. And that meant the world to me. And it showed me the class and the character. And Teresa, I know you had a conversation, you know, that w- w- remained private, of course. Yeah. But, you know, that's why I want to say thank y'all for for listening and reaching out. And that's how we fight cancel culture. We fight back. Yeah. You don't you don't stick your head in the sand and pretend it ain't happening. Or, oh, God, I hope they don't come down my row. The hell if they do. <laughs> we'll fight for you, too. Yeah. We have to fight back. We have to let folks know this is not acceptable. People make mistakes in life. You know, what it reminded me of to an extent, you remember a couple of years ago, a, a, a cheerleader in high school on a bus had, I guess the whole bus was playing some rap song and she had a Snapchat or a TikTok of her saying the N word to the song. Yeah. Some little angry troll saved it. And when that girl made the cheerleading squad at one of the SEC schools, I believe, it's resurfaced. Mm-hmm. And it's her saying the N-word. And she got kicked out of school, off the cheer team, the whole nine yards. It's like these angry, miserable trolls are just sitting back in the cut. I can think of two or three off the top of my head right now. Mm-hmm. Just waiting for you to say one wrong one wrong thing. Well, and and that's kind of the thing that has bothered me through this is I want to be able to address the fact that this person that I so respect um, is hurting because of the herd mentality of, you know, this, like I said, it's like the walking dead, like, you know, they're coming after you, you can't get away from them. And um, I want to address that in terms that... um, I don't want to have that. Like what is happening in today's culture and it happens on both sides. It's not just this incident. And I want to keep saying that because there are people out there who will be coming after us because we spoke up for Barbie. And yes, I'm here to speak up for Barbie. But the other thing is too, what if each and every one of us was judged on the worst thing we've said? Now, keep in mind, Barbie was not you know, not the word ignorant as in dumb, but she had no idea what was about to happen when she used a word that a lot of Southerners use um, in the and And I'm not saying the word is right or wrong. I'm just saying like she had no idea what was about to happen. It Think of the worst thing you ever said. And if you can't think of it, it's either because you're a saint or because you talk like that all the time. What if you were judged that day? What if it was that day? And your whole life depended on it. Everything you've built for your whole life, your brand, your job, your family, everything rides on that. Because some people said, I wish she hadn't said that. Yeah. It, it's disgusting. And uh, and it makes me want to find people on the other side to say stuff. But I don't have the time to do it. I'm actually busy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like I just I, I'll choose to fight when people need the help. Let's take we got the phone lines are jammed up. Let's take a call here on the Dustin Bailey at Southern Magnolia's sure. Realty phone line. Hey, caller, thanks for staying on hold. You're on there. Hey, Clay, I was wrong. Oh, you were wrong. I like it. Hello. Hello. I had the wrong caller. These, I get these phone lines jammed up. Hey, caller, you there? Hey, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. Hey, listen. Um, I watched the video. Okay. I have a whole different take on it. You ready for this, Clay? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're, you're a black man. I want to hear your perspective. Yeah. First of all, how many times in school did people talk about your daddy? Every day. Okay. You, but why was it when they said your mama or your mammy? Those were fighting words. They didn't even have to make an insult. All they had to say was just your mama. I love my mama. <laughs> or, or, yeah, or your mammy. Right. They didn't say anything. They didn't say, they didn't put a negative, like, pronoun on or anything they just say your mama or your mammy right those are fighting words now do i think she meant any racial connotation about it i don't know now could she could she have got a teeth kicked in for saying your mammy probably was it disrespectful yeah but for all this council culture stuff come on really right Right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was it was not with ill intent. You have to look at the intent sometimes. That's the thing. All the time, me, actually. Yeah. You know, what was the intent? What was the context? You know, now, I, 
I tell you one thing. I really applaud the whole incident for is that when he said, "Really, really, you're gonna you, you, grandmammy, really?" She didn't like. I think she realized, "Uh oh, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. No need, no, no, you know, no need to go ahead and dig this hole any deeper." And address it off the air, and I think that was good on both parts. No, see, right? I think I think you're mishearing that. That was the guy recording it from his phone that was saying that. Oh, I thought that was Patrick too. No, oh, uh, I, I, I thought it was Patrick too. My bad, then. No, that was the guy that was recording it. You know, because you started with the Kroger's comment, and yeah. all, most all y'all Southerners say Kroger's. I did a whole TikTok video about y'all calling it Kroger's. Yeah. And I'm, and, and apparently <laughs> I'm the Lone Ranger that, that only calls it Kroger. And that's a white and black thing. That is a Southern thing. So she started off with the, with the Kroger's thing and then the grandmammy and then the pie. Yeah. Just like saying Sonic. Yeah. yeah. It's only one Sonic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but no, but, but, but no, um, Clay, how many times have you actually used the word greasy grandmammy <laughs> in your, in, I, in your conversation? It just rolls off the tongue. Now, was it kind of a insulting factor? Yeah, but the racial connotation, y'all, come on, really, I mean, really. You know, I could see if people got mad if I said it, but yeah. I mean, I mean, because I have a history of having tough conversations. Yeah, this is Barbie Bassett we're talking about, really. Yeah, she's I mean, as gentle as anybody I know. But but think about when words like your mama or your mammy or your your, your greasy grandmammy came out; those were like just fighting words. You know, right. they didn't even have to say nothing negative about it. Y'all had to just say your mama. You know, your mama was an insult enough. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that aspect of it, but you're exactly right. <laughs> so from that perspective, when she said your mama and your grandmammy, I was like, oh, boy. I think she realized where, where she screwed up and just, you know, did the professional thing. But do I think there's a racial connotation with it? No. Disrespectful, very. Got it. You sure. know, because back, and I hate to say it like this, but, you know, the 80s was the best era ever, and so was the early 90s. After that, you know, everything just went crazy. But you would get your, you, would get your, um, you know, what's the old word? You get the butter slapped off your teeth or something, saying get, something get, like that. Get your oh, block yeah. knocked off. Yep. Yeah, you know, slap the butt out the teeth off your teeth and the taste out your mouth. Yeah. But from that aspect, it was very insulting. But, like, as far as the racial connotation, y'all, come on. Yeah. Right. All right, brother. We got some more calls, Derek. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. Uh huh. Uh huh. Let's take one more call here. Hey, you're on there. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Sorry about that. Sometimes hey. these uh, lines get crossed up a little bit. Uh, that's, that's all right. Listen, um, um, I'm, I'm a black guy. Uh, you know, I'm just going to say it, man. Um, you you got to be cognizant cognizant of, of of what you're saying, and you have to be sensitive of, of others. I'm not saying you have to be sensitive, but you have to be you know mindful of others. And for that, for the other guy that just called and said it's not a racial connotation, clearly he doesn't own Google or a phone or a smartphone. You can Google what Mammy is, and, and there's a reason why it's, it's, it's uh, disrespectful. It's, it's, it's a reason why it's fighting words. And, this, and that, that guy knows, and I'm talking to you, brother, that guy knows when somebody says Mammy or somebody says Pappy, they usually look like you. So the connotation is different. When it comes from some from somebody else, I don't care how sweet Barbie is or how sweet anybody else is. When somebody says that, that is disrespectful. It is. I don't care how how you look at it. I I don't, I don't care about what what Barbie says. Cause people going to talk. I'm just glad it's out there. Again, I don't agree with you on, on everything you say, but I listen to you because I want to understand how the other side thinks. And the only way that you can get to the table, you have to have some chairs there for everybody to sit so you can get some accomplished. I don't got to agree with you. You ain't got to agree with me on everything, but you got to be cognizant of, of what you say and sensitive of others. And if you're not going to do that, we can't get anything resolved. And, and the thing is, when someone says they being, you know, when someone says where well, it doesn't have a racial connotation, that's just a lie. You can just look up the word. You can look up where it came from. It's actual. It's an actual caricature of black folk, of black women, of a fat black woman, big lips with a bonnet on her head. That's the caricature of a mammy. And if you don't understand that, you are being disingenuous. Can I ask and you that a question? And guy that's called is lying. Yeah, and, and I want to ask you a question because I I have had experiences in the last few years, and I'm asking you this because you're being forthright with me, and, and, and I need to know, but I've had a few experiences in the last few years where something that I genuinely didn't understand was offensive was offensive. And um, and I remember the first one that it happened to me because I grew up in a very inclusive family. You know, we didn't 
and I'm going to use the phrase that I didn't know was offensive when I used it. I, I said, we didn't see color because we didn't. You know, it was like that was the way we were raised. We had friends of all different descriptions. And and it was never a question whether we were all equal. Um, but one day I told somebody that and I said, you know, we didn't see color. And they said, that is so offensive. And I was like, I, I didn't mean to be, offen-, you know. So I think one of the things that this is an education process for a lot of us. Um, is that something that, I mean, like where, I don't know how to ask this right, but, but where do you find out those things that, and I know to some people it's absolutely common sense, but I didn't have a, a life where there were people that were trying to be offensive um, to black people until, you know, recently when all the conversation started. How do we continue well, that conversation? Well, I, mean, I get I get what you're saying, and I think you're very fortunate to grow up in a household where you didn't see color. I don't think that's an, anything to be offense, you know, uh, offensive. If someone says I don't see color, right? Um, but but the thing is, I think you're very fortunate. A lot of people, especially in the South, and I'm speaking from a different experience than you guys. Sure. We have these conversations around the table about you know, um, you know not being small or shrinking yourself around other people, but saying, hey, you got to be aware of what you say. Sure. Um, you know, you, you can't say certain things. My parents had this conversation with me because sometimes it could have been consequences that could have been deadly for me. Sure. And, and I'm an 80s baby. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not someone that grew up in the 60s or the 70s or even the 50s. But they still had these conversations with me. So I and again, I just you can just count yourself as being fortunate for not having to, to do that. I didn't have that luxury. Sure. Right, hey, uh, hey, brother, look, we, we're up against a break. I got to ask one question real quick, though. Do you think she should have been fired, or is the apology acceptable? Uh, wait, she was fired? No, 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 no. She almost was. Do you think okay, no. they, people were calling no, for her no, job? No, she should not be fired. No. The apology is acceptable. I, I didn't. I didn't hear it. Uh, I'll stick around and hear it if you want to play it. I, I don't know if I'm play it again, but it's on WLBT's uh, website. You can just go WLBT dot com, and it should, it's right there on the homepage. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I'll go take a look at it. Thank right, hey, thanks it, for brother. the conversation. Yep. Thank uh, you. Bye. All right, caller, stay on hold. We'll be right back in the Mac Hike of Flowood Studios with Therese Apel, DarkHorsePressNow.com, and The Clay Edwards Show. Say, welcome back into The Clay Edwards Show. We are live in the Mac Hike of Flowood Studios. So that gives me a great opportunity to talk about Mac Hike of Flowood. Love those guys. I do. Look, they uh, we, we shout out to Corey and Parker and Bennett and Abe and the whole team over there, Hunter. Right. Uh, just great folks. And uh, they sponsor Dark Horse Press. They sponsor WYAB. And uh, look, these are good folks, man. I mean, yeah. I, look, I know I sell cars at a used car lot, but surely some of y'all need a Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, a low miles premium used car. You know, need somebody to help you with the finance and the whole nine yards. That's Mac Hike. Absolutely. And, you know, I I bought my last three cars there. And it's because it's always easy. You know, it's like you, you go in there, you get your stuff done. You, you know, if you come in with financing, I've done that. I've gotten finance there. You know, it's just always a, a real joy to work with them. Yeah, you know, a lot of these big car lots will bring management teams in from out of state. Yeah. And they don't necessarily understand the market. Yeah, these guys do. And, uh, you know, Mac Hike struggled with that a little bit early on as they came in from Houston. But Mac Hike's from Mississippi. Yeah. Started in H- the dealerships in Houston. And they they figured out local works here. Mm-hmm. And uh, they got a great team of local folks yeah. over there at the Flowood Dodge store, the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram store with Corey McDonald. I mean, this whole thing is you want to know a guy? You know a guy now. And yeah. Corey, know, Corey knows everybody. He means that, yeah. He does. <laughs> and look, I have worked with every single guy on that desk except Parker. So just great folks, and he seems to be a good guy, too. Yeah. Uh, so look, y'all get over there, shop them online, 24-7, 365 at dot com. Tell them we sent you. Amen. All right. Let's jump straight to the phones real quick. Okay. They are jammed up. Hey, you're on there. Hello. Hey. Hey. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Every time I put somebody on hold online, too, it does that. Hey, brother, you there? Yeah, man, I'm here. All right. Hey, sorry about it. I got no dead spot early. I got a question for you, Therese. Sure. I've heard over the what kind of money do reporters and anchors actually make at Jackson? I mean, uh, is it much to, even? I mean, I've always heard it was nothing. No, it's garbage. Yeah, and and the thing is, you know, it's like you work all hours in all conditions, inside and outside. You know, and you're constantly on the go. It's a really toxic environment because you know the deadlines and the competition and all that. 
Um, and I mean, I think at some of the stations, spitballing, um, you know, a reporter just out of college will make like 32 to 35, maybe a little more. Um, what, what was somebody on the anchor desk make? Anchor desk, I'm not sure because I've never been there, but um, my understanding is it starts probably around 50, 55, and goes up from there with experience, I'm sure. So. Well, everybody's been making minimum wage for the most part this day and time. I mean, that that's the thing. It's like people look at, at TV people and think they're fancy, and, and really we're all eating ramen noodles. You get what you're paying for. Y'all have a good day. <laughs> uh now it's radio, guys. We're making all the money. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. I kid. All right, let's take one more call here. I think this is the person that kept getting booted off here. Let's get them on line one. It's Derek calling back. Oh, good. Uh, hey, Derek. Clay, I'm sorry, man. I, I hate to do this, but listen. Listening is the greatest form of learning. I address the disrespect and, and, and the historical connotation. But I'm going to say this, and I'm going to be done with it. For the gentleman that called in and accused me of being desensitized and not knowing racial connotations, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, I address that, and I'm going to raise you another question. When Ole Miss decided to pick a, ho- a black homecoming queen and they put that big, morbidly obese whale on the back of a car, did you, call, did you uh, complain to them about, about darky culture and I- iconography? Because I did. My baby brother is on the Ole Miss Alumni Association. And I said, how in the world did y'all sit back and allow that to happen when you had two women who were in the running that were slim and fit going for it, and you didn't hear nothing else about them? They went and found this girl, and she didn't even know she was in the running to be a homecoming queen. But, yeah, they put that manish stereotype on there. So did you say all that when that happened, sir? Wow. I didn't you even give, know about you that. Give me some legitimate racism, and I will fight it for you. Fight it with you, like I did at Ole Miss. Yep. There, there were two. There were two women who were fit and, and trim and, and had excellent test score. I mean, scores in the running for homecoming queen. Then all of a sudden, they went and found this morbidly obese girl and made her homecoming queen. And one of her friends said, "We didn't know you was going out for that." She said, "Neither did I." That lets you know that they went and done that as a joke. Now, yeah. did you complain to them of being desensitized? Right. I did. Right. Now, yeah. that was a legitimate example where a man in stereotype was put up for the whole world to see, saying, this is your homecoming queen, the big man in stereotype. Old Miss did that, and I don't do nothing for Old Miss, and I don't support Old Miss. Hell, sir. I fight racism, sir. Yes, absolutely. Appreciate it, Derek. Thank you. Hey, call you on there. Hey, Clay. Hey. Uh, what I don't understand is uh, why black people can be so disrespectful to each other, and then as soon as somebody else says something different, they go batshit crazy. Ooh. Can't do that. <laughs> Can't Did do that. Did we catch it? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, look, guys, if we go call in, there's, there, there's obviously rules and regulations. And look, I don't, wanna, I don't want this to turn into the – why black people can say stuff show yeah. versus why white people can't say it. Cause I mean, I will say this, there appears to be nothing that f- can't be said about white Christians. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're low hanging fruit. I mean, you saw what happened last week when Kanye attempted to ask a question about Jewish folks, uh, complete cancellation, mm-hmm. but, any, but, but we're the low hanging fruit that anybody can say anything about. I, I, I understand that conversation, but that's a whole nother show. Sure. Let's say one more call here. Hey, you're on there. Hey, I just wanted to address the not seeing color uh, sure. thing. Uh, and, and it's not so much a disrespect, um, but it's just like if we go to the zoo, we know the giraffes are, you know, black and orange or what have you. So it's, 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 it's more of an acknowledgement. I know you guys are white. I'm black. I have white friends. We just acknowledge that we do see color. Sure. But, you know, that's, that's where the difference ends. I mean, we're all pretty much the same. So just to acknowledge the differences that we all have that's what you know that's that's the bigger issue well and i'm glad you said that because the way it was described to me is like look at me am i black and i was like yeah and they're like okay then you see color and i was like okay well i guess i was being a little more figurative and he was like this is not a thing where you can be figurative just say you see color but you don't care and and that's the thing it's almost like you know like the culture in now it's like you have to be oblivious to things don't we don't need to be oblivious. It's okay to see the differences in one another, but sure. you know, just do acknowledge and, and keep moving. You know, that's that's the whole thing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it, All right. Uh-huh. All right. All right.
little chill out on the phone for just a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, Therese, I know that um, it's very obviously it's a very touchy situation. It is very t- touchy topic subject, and uh, it, it's, it's something people are very passionate about. And I, you know, we talked off air, and I talked about this for those that listened yesterday. I was a part of a racial healing roundtable type conversation that the Jackson Free Press put on years ago, and uh, Brad Franklin, who I ran it about yesterday. Is it, maybe it's time to get some rational people, like some of the callers we've had today. Sure. Back down at the table. And um, even some further left or further right. And, and, and see where the differences lie. And I think that's important, too. And, and you know, these are discussions we need to be having with our friends of other races, too. Because I had a good friend several years ago that was a, um, a news reporter at a different outlet. And she was black. And, I mean, we called each other TNT because... Her well, it was Tammy Eswick. I'll just go ahead and say it. Uh, I and, love uh, Tammy. She was great. Yeah. So Tammy and I, you know, we always just kind of we like to be trouble together when we were at scenes. We were just obnoxious and fun, and you know, just a a good friend, a good girlfriend. That if you've ever had a best girlfriend, that was kind of the the vibe. Um, but I think the thing that was interesting was one day we were talking about something. And I said something like, well, I don't vote Democrat, something. And she stopped me and she said, hold up. And I said, what? She said, you assume I'm a Democrat? Why? And I was like, um, I, 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 and she said, you, you assume that because I'm black. And I said, well, and you're in the media. And she's like, no, what if I'm not? She said, I don't care if you know if I am or not, but what if I'm not? And all of a sudden I was like, you know what? Let's have these conversations sometimes. Sometimes it's okay just to stop your friend and say, hey, I'm not mad at you, but this is something to look at, you know, and I learned from that. Yeah, I'll tell you, what, let's take one. I wasn't going to take another call. Let's take one more. This is Miss Lacey. Okay. Hey, Lacey, you're on there. Hi, good morning. Hey, good morning. Hi, Therese. Hey. Miss your voice, Therese. I'll miss, miss you your... too. Um, I just, I just wanted to say, I think the people that get angry, that they're just, they're waiting on something to happen. Or something to be said. You know, I have a friend, a black girl. She said uh, some some lady called her, uh, what do they say? The word is um, you. God, I can't believe I can't think of it. Oh, man. I hate when that happens. <laughs> I, I'm I'm in the dark right now, but at any rate, it's people that are looking right. for something to be angry about. She said, "Gal, that's what it was," because I don't use that word. Yeah, uh, some white person called somebody gal, and she got offended by it because it was a white person saying that, and I thought that was so stupid. Yeah, I gal, think of that as like a Midwest thing. Yeah, I'm like gal, so they get offended. By the smallest things, they just—I don't even know what to call it. It's sad, but you know what? I'm glad Bobby kept her job. That's an awesome thing. Yes, yeah. I just hate that she had to go through that. And yeah. Otha Kane is an idiot. Yeah. I had to say that. Lacey, got to go. Y'all Thank you so much. Day. Thank you, Miss Lacey. All right, we got to take our last break of the first hour here. We'll be right back on one three nine W Y A B. Studios. This is the Clay Edwards Show. We want to thank everybody who chimed in the first hour. Teres, thank you for joining the show today. Glad to. We try to have them tough conversations, you know, and give people a platform to give their opinions on it. I know I learned a little today. Yeah, I did too. You know, uh, you got any farewells, goodbyes, thank yous? Um, I just want to remind people of the little kid that went viral a couple of years back, and he would walk around and tell people, don't forget to show love. And it's so cute if you can find that video on YouTube. Guys, don't forget to show love. This world needs it. Amen. Amen. Therese, thank you. Y'all be sure to check out darkhorsepressnow.com for the best news in Mississippi. Thank you. Real talk. <laughs> without all the drama, without all the back and forth. I mean, people still find things to argue about. People but, fight, yeah. But uh, go follow her on all the social media platforms, Dark Horse Press. All right, coming up next, it's our Testimonial Tuesdays. We'll be right back on 103.9. Thanks for listening. Tune in tomorrow at 7 a.m. as the Clay Edwards Show discusses all that is going on in and around the city of Jackson. This concludes our broadcast day. Right here on 103.9 WYAB.